it hit him that he couldn't have her and she was walking away from the marriage. And so it just, that was the day that he realized I, this is over and he just kind of snapped. So as we head into the holiday season, it's often viewed as a joyful, festive time, but it can also be an isolating time for people experiencing domestic violence. So this week, Fox 19 is going to bring you a series of stories, digging a little bit deeper into the problem of domestic violence. And tonight, Peyton Marshall shares the emotional impact of one local who lost a loved one and how they're now working to bring awareness to this issue. Red and white roses delicately intertwined the bouquet Rachel held in 2008 when she married her groom, Jason Madden. Rachel was only 19 years old. Brunette ringlets twirled under her white crown as the tulle from her veil flowed behind her. It all seemed to be picture perfect as the couple welcomed their son, Eric. But 12 years later, Eric would become an orphan as a result of domestic violence. I have shot fired, male shooting at a female at Southern Ohio Lumber. On September 14, 2022, Adams County Police reported on a murder-suicide. 33-year-old Rachel Madden was killed by her 32-year-old husband, Jason Madden, at the Southern Ohio Lumber Company, a place where they both worked. According to the Adams County Sheriff's Department, Jason fled the scene. Roughly nine minutes later, Jason was pulled over by law enforcement at the intersection of State Route 41 and 32 in Peebles, Ohio. The Adams County Sheriff's Department said Jason killed himself. Seen in the vehicle, gunshots, uh, massive trauma. It hit him that he couldn't have her and she was walking away from the marriage. And so it just, that was the day that he realized, I, this is over. And he just kind of snapped. Whitney Bradshaw, Rachel's twin sister, said that about a month prior to her murder, Rachel decided to leave Jason. She says her sister wanted a divorce because she didn't feel safe. Rachel's brother, Jared, says Jason started isolating Rachel from the family years prior. Just pay attention. You, you know your family. You know your, you know your loved ones. You know your siblings. You know your, your, your son or daughter. You know, you know when things are off with them. You've grown up with them your whole life. Watch, watch for these little signs because they may be very subtly trying to tell you that they need help. She was always helping, empathetic, um, strong for everyone else around her. And finally, she decided to be strong for herself. And it just wasn't enough. Rachel's family sent me a copy of her domestic violence civil protection order. In Rachel's handwriting, she describes the couple's separation and the violence she endured. I went out with a friend, and when he couldn't get a hold of me, he freaked out and showed up at the house. We argued for 30 minutes on the porch, in which he threatened to kill himself. It reads on to say, on August 9th, he came into work as I was leaving and we argued for 30 minutes. When I tried to leave, he got in my car and we argued for an hour and 30 minutes. I went to call 911 and he put his gun to his head and told me if I called them, he would pull the trigger. In the protection order, Rachel says Jason tried to blindfold her to have sex. She said no. And the report says Jason showed up to her home and continued to pressure her. She says, quote, I was uncomfortable and I felt he was going to rape me. We asked her, do you feel like he would hurt Eric? And um, she said, no, I don't. But she said he might hurt me. But if he does, at least he'll be dead or in prison and Eric will never have to see him again. Take a look here on the protection order. It says the respondent shall not possess, use, carry or obtain any deadly weapon. But if you zoom in on the handwriting, it says, quote, Guns shall remain in possession of grandparents. But Rachel's family says Jason was living with his grandparents at the time, meaning he lived where the guns were being stored. Would you say that there's any frustration with the legal system as it is now? I mean, absolutely. Jared says this order was one of Rachel's cries for help, but it wasn't enough to save her. You know, you need to do your job right. You need to do what you said you would do, and maybe we can save some lives here. Jason says there needs to be stricter laws and public servants need to be held accountable. She's a good mom. She's a good sister. Just an all-around good person. You know, she had a good heart and, you know, she, she just wanted to live a good life. And when it comes to family, he says tough questions need to be asked. I think people frown upon talking about it for sure. I think it's one of those sticky subjects where people think like, well, you know, you don't want to 
interfere behind closed doors in someone else's home. Madden's brother says that needs to change so that no other children have to grow up orphans. Pay attention to your loved ones because that's a hard conversation to have, especially with a small child. You know what I mean? Like he, he knew, but he didn't know, no. According to the CDC, one in three women and one in four men report having experienced severe physical violence from an intimate partner. As Rachel's family continues to mourn, they also continue to fight for justice. It's different now, you know, so we got to, you know, take care of business and then, of course, fight for those that can't fight for themselves. Now, this report from Peyton Marshall is the first of a three-part special along with reporter Ken Brown. Tomorrow, Peyton is going to sit down with a survivor who will bravely share her story on how she got away from her abuser. Also, if you or someone you know is experiencing domestic violence, we do have several links to resources on our website that can help. You can also contact the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-SAFE.